Hi everyone, welcome back to Southeast Exotics. So today is actually more of an educational video. So this video is all about if you want to get your first tarantula, what you should get. And I walk you through the care guide of them and everything that you need to know if you want to get into this hobby. So the first thing that you need to figure out is basically how much you want to spend on a spider or if you can because there are some places that will donate because of how much they have for example if they have too much of an egg sac or if you want to buy a bulk so my first recommendation which i recommend to any single every single and any single person that asks me is a salmon pink bird eater now salmon pink bird eaters are amazing in lots of ways um, the number one is that they're always on display. So if you want a massive tarantula that will always, always, always be on display, the salmon per pink bird eater is for you. The salmon pink bird eater gets around 20 centimeters in, in width. So from leg to leg, it's a massive tarantula. It's as big nearly as my palm. So it's huge. <clears throat> and the only problem is with them is if you buy them from a very, very young age, they will take around, I would say like two years to get to their final size or maybe even more probably three or four years to get to their final size because when they're juvenile they'll probably get to juvenile stage which will be around this big which i will show you guys in a second a juvenile one which will be around this big once it is juvenile so first of all this is what you can expect as a sling so i will show you guys now this is what a sling looks like so once they're slings, they kind of always tend to hide. They are never really out in the, in the open. They are always tend to hide. Now I'm trying to figure out where this one is. And yes, they they do borrow. So you won't see them much when they're babies. Um. Oh, there he is. Yep, found him. Right, right there. There it is. So that's as, as big as you can expect it to be once you buy a sling. If you buy a sling, that is the size that you are expecting. Right closer. So there it is. Literally around one centimeter. That is literally it. It's tiny. And these cups are really, really small. So that is what it will be like once you buy your first sling if you want to go. Or a sling now for example if you want to get a a juvenile or something a lot bigger so for example these slings you can literally buy them for around one pound fifty two pound fifty or that would be around four dollars in usd or five dollars at max so basically they are cheap because people kind of want to get rid of them when they have them because the problem is that when they lay an egg sac it's around like a thousand babies which is honestly like impossible to sell so that's why people just usually give them away but usually 20 percent of them die when when they are born but still there is a lot so if you want to go for a juvenile i mean this is quite a big juvenile but if you want to go for a juvenile this is basically what you're what you're gonna be getting she's around i'd say seven or eight centimeters in length um she is in heavy heavy primo as you can see on the abdomen so that's how you can see that they're in heavy primo and this one just well, wanted to um yeah so she's in very very heavy primo so that's why every option they get they go and hide the way you can determine if a tarantula is on primo, it's mainly with juveniles or larger specimens, not really juveniles, is if their abdomen goes a shiny black color. If it's like a glossy black color, which I'll show you now what that will look like, because we do have a tarantula that is a really good tarantula for first. If you want to buy a tarantula as well as your first tarantula, and I'll show you how that would look. As a mole on the back so you see this glossy glossy black look so there you go it's there you can see there's that glossy black look on the abdomen here there's a glossy black look there so that is what you're looking for so anyways back to the sound pink bird eaters we'll get to this one later on in the video so with sound pink bird eaters they're honestly great 
they're very hardy they require when their slings around two times a day for feet um, not two times a day two times a week for feeding at most um, when they're small don't expect them to eat because like in front of you or watch them eat when they're really really tiny they won't um, you have to quite literally put pre-killed um, anything basically in there but it has to be smaller than that than the carapace of the tarantula otherwise it will not eat it so when they're that small i'd recommend fruit flies or getting baby mealworms cutting them in half and um, giving them that and then of course when they're juveniles you can move on to medium or even large crickets i mean the the one that i just showed you feeds on large crickets so and that is around the size that you would be expecting after like two years i mean i got her when she was tiny so we're going to go into uh, quite a, a big salmon pink bird eater. I mean, this one's only probably about one molt off or two molts off of being an adult. So I'll show you guys. There's a lot of webbing. As you can see here, there is a lot of webbing. So this is another salmon pink bird eater. There he is. Let me just spin it around. There. Oh. There. So this is another salmon pink bird eater, as you can see there. Now this one is quite big. So compared to my hands, this one is around 10 centimeters, definitely. 10, maybe even 13 centimeters from leg to leg, definitely. So this one, it is, it, this one's a very big tarantula. I mean, this one can literally eat basically anything from um, large cr uh, crickets to even... Um, adult locusts to basically anything that's big so you wouldn't feed him like for example small crickets because it wouldn't make a difference to her abdomen but the way that you can tell if a tarantula is fed or not is look by looking at their abdomen so if a tarantula's abdomen is really really thin that means that they haven't really been eating much and they obviously need food so the way that you just don't wait until the abdomen is that small but at that point you know you have to feed it it's an emergency as otherwise it could die. Make sure also if you buy a salmon pink bird eater, the substrate needs to always be moist or wet. Not too wet to the point where if you squeeze it, water will come out of it, but to the point where it is wet to the touch. So for example, for tarantulas, and this applies to mainly all of them, what I usually recommend is um, getting one side of their enclosure and spraying it every once or twice a week when you feed it just so it has that one side that it is always like a lot more humidified than the rest of the enclosure so in case if it wants to go mole and your enclosure let's say lost the humidity then it can always go to that part and it will always 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 get that humidity that it needs so that is basically what you need to do for example, a lot of people ask me, why do I not have water dishes for these big ones? Well, my reason is I have never in my four years of keeping tarantulas, I've never, ever, ever had one die due to dehydration. Now, the, now the reason this is, is because I really, really um, make sure that the substrate is always moist and the humidity doesn't escape. So, for example, for the, for the lids that I have here for like this one, I usually put sellotape around these holes. So there's only these holes that humidity can escape from or come back in. And I have never had a problem with the substrate. Now, you might ask me, okay then, so what substrate do you use? Because for example, loads of keepers um, recommend cocoa fiber. Now, what I say to them keepers is they're absolutely stupid. Cocoa fiber is horrible for tarantulas. And yep, there's a lot of people that will disagree with me, but it's just true. Cocoa fiber is absolutely horrible. It gets dry so quickly, you would have to physically keep spraying it around like three or four times a week for it not to <coughs> lose hydration. For example, I use cocoa fiber for my crested gecko, which of course will come soon in any video where I'll show you around our all of our animals where we have loads of geckos. We have leopard geckos, we have crested geckos, we've got snakes. So we will get to those parts, but for tarantulas and them, it's it's absolutely horrible. It's definitely not worth it and it doesn't hold humidity, but I will show you what to buy. So for example, this tarantula, I would not handle this one because it's just really, as you can see, some salmon pink bird, it is not a problem at all. Go for it, handle it. This one, 
she just too fidgety as as you can see like she just doesn't really want to be handled so yeah so that is the other reason i do not use a water dish and third of all i have never seen any of them drink and do not believe the stupid sponge trick that is the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard where pet shops say oh yeah put a sponge in a water dish because they can put their fangs in it and drink water that is ridiculous they get all of the hydration and all of their nutrients from the food Make sure that your, your locust or whatever you use, you feed it prior to feeding. So around carrots or whatever. Carrots are perfect. They're, they're full of, um, of nutrients. Also, they, they have a lot of um, water in them and a lot of humidity in them. So it would be perfect for these guys. But as you can see now, she's a bit pissed at me. But yeah. So honestly, Salmon Pink Bird Eaters, amazing first choice. And the third, well, the fifth and final thing about these guys is watch out for the urdicating hairs. Those, they will get in your skin really deep and you'll just be itching. It's not venomous, it's not anything like that. But yeah, you should look out for that. So, my second recommendation is a curly hair. Now, curly hair tarantulas are absolutely amazing. You can literally handle them and anything you absolutely want. This is our little baby curly hair. She's honestly so adorable and so cute. We've... We've had her for not not too long. We've had her for around a month or so. She's um, she's really really cute, and as you can see, she's really really tiny. And yeah, she you can you can easily handle these guys. I mean, these guys won't do anything to you. For nothing around those lines. They're perfect. They're amazing pets as well, and they get really really big as well. The same way as of course the um, the salmon pink bird eater, for example. So yeah, I definitely do recommend these guys. As a first option. Now let me just get it back. Slowly. Just let them do their thing. I mean I can feel the web going on to me. But yeah. Amazing first choice. Honestly I definitely recommend it. It's exactly the same process. As for example. The Salmon Pink Birdie. That you generally. It's the same thing. So make sure. Wet substrate. And yeah, so curly hairs, again, very cheap, very, very cheap. They come very, very small. For example, this one we, we bought for around 10, 10 pounds, I think. But yeah, honestly, very small and um, they are very, very cheap. Again, pound twenty per sling or juveniles more. I mean, for the sound pink birdies that I showed you, they're really, really big one. You could literally buy one of those for like 60, 70 quid. Right, now, let me go back to the substrate that I wanted to show you all. So... Here it is. It's called Spider Life. This is honestly what you need. It's from Pro Rep. It's not an advertised video or anything, but I've been using these guys for around two, two years after I've been getting the same thing over and over again. Use Cocoa Fiber, use Cocoa Fiber. Absolutely not. Do not use Cocoa Fiber, use Spider Life. They have an increase in humidity. They use loads of other substrates that they mix together and they make the, the substrate be able to hold more humidity so 100 percent definitely recommend it it's not expensive this is a 10 liter bag for around 15 pounds sometimes even cocoa cocoa fiber or those cocoa bricks can cost more so i definitely recommend this and these are specially made for spiders so let's get on to some other spiders that could be your first choice or if you already have one of these two then here's more that you could get so as we saw earlier this one now, this one is the Sazmai um, tarantula. It's, um, <clears throat> it's the Malaysian, I think. Yeah, the Malaysian tarantula. Now, this one. This one is a gorgeous tarantula. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a picture up with it of how it looks when it's an adult, just so you guys have an idea. So, this one, this tarantula will be completely blue. So, it is honestly beautiful and perfect. And um, this is probably a really, really cheap tarantula that you can buy anywhere. It's nice and blue and perfect. Um, you can literally handle this one as well. I'm not going to handle it just because I don't know the temperament of it. But yeah, honestly, an amazing tarantula. And I would definitely recommend it to any, any person that wants to buy a tarantula that has more color. Because, for example, these ones are more colorful than, for example, the rest, like the salmon pink bird eater or the, or the curly hair. These ones are a lot more colorful. So if you want to buy a colorful tarantula, this is it. I'm going to pop a picture up now of how it looks and how blue it is. As you can see, it's gorgeous and it's blue and it's bright. 
So yeah, so that is the Sazma Tarantula, gorgeous. This one, they come around a bit more expensive. This one's around 10 to 15 pound a sling. So probably this size, you would probably spend around 30 pounds for this one. So for the last one, well, I have two more recommendations. So this one, the Vagans. Now this one again is a lot more colorful than all the other ones. This one's got a more of a red-ish tint to him. As you can see, there it is. So it's got more like a reddish, a reddish color around like the abdomen on on the hairs, and this one is like a jet black and a golden abdomen tarantula. So it's honestly amazing. So definitely, definitely, de definitely recommend if you want to get a really gorgeous tarantula. Again, these ones get big as well, quite big. So I'll pop a picture up of how it looks as an adult now. So as you can see, it is really, really that bright color orange and that jet black body so now let's get back and let's go for the final one now this one i mean for the wagon this very cheap tarantula again around three pound per sling so now this last one is probably the most expensive out of all of them this one is a green bottle blue so green bottle blue slings come around 20 pounds 15 pounds depending on where you get them from. My trusted source is the Spider Shop. I'll link them in the description below. If you want to get anything from them, they are the trusted retailers. The shipping is very quick, and honestly, I've never had a problem with them. So, the Green Bottle Blue Tarantula. Now, this tarantula is honestly amazing. Its colors are relentless. So, for example, when they're slings, they have this kind of orange bum to them. Let me see if I can show you guys. Right, there we go. So, when they slings, they have this orange bum to them and they have this kind of greenish legs as as you can see there they have this greenish tint to their legs there you go so you can't really see it but it does have like a greenish tint to its leg that's why it's called the green bottle blue but where this tarantula changes is when around i'd say the next mold or two more molds this tarantula would be basically green <laughs> it's like a greenish bluish tint to this tarantula i mean this tarantula is gorgeous I wouldn't quite recommend it as the first tarantula, but it could go if you're comfortable with rehousing it, for example, because that's when things go wrong is in the rehouse. But I definitely do recommend this one. I'll pop a picture up of it now when it's an adult. So as you can see, it's got like a bluish greenish coloration. It's a big spider as well, so they get big. And they are very heavy webbers. And that, to me, is an important spec, spec if you want to say it, to a spider. I love heavy webbing spiders. I love it where there's like where they can build a web castle. So yeah, I definitely recommend the spider. It is a lot more expensive than the rest of them, but it's worth it. It's hundred percent worth it. So yeah, so this is basically all you needed to know, except with the green bottle blue. Now the green bottle blue is kind of a arboreal tarantula, but some say that they do fine as terrestrial as well. Now, as you can see, it does go and does mainly spend all of its time at the bottom, but I've seen it go all the way to the top and wait there for food and everything. So for these, the, 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 quite the only difference is just put in like a, 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 I don't even know, like a small bit of wood like this one when they're slings. And then when they get older, like a bigger cork bark would be perfect. Now, for example, if you're asking, okay, okay, but then what do I house a sling in if I buy a sling? Now, slings can be housed in something like this, what I showed you, very small. Make sure the smaller the better when they're really, really tiny. Make sure the holes are very tiny so they cannot fit through them because when I bought like my fourth baby, baby sling, I made the holes too big. So definitely, definitely go for this. Third of all, if you really, really, really buy a small tarantula, I recommend a little cup like this. Now, just fill the substrate to this much, put, poke a hole down for just like a little bit and then they can go and borrow down there. But that is honestly all you need to know about your first tarantula and what you should get. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment something, like, and make sure you subscribe. And of course, I will link everything that I said down below. Make sure you check out our new videos on the left and right hand side corner, and make sure you press the subscribe button. Really hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.